Welcome to the Red V TV show, supported by Chapel House Cars for the 2024 season. As we reflect on a historic week for the club with the Saints women to be paid, and we look ahead to the men's team playing the Red Devils this Friday night. Good evening, Kevin. Good evening. Whenever you mention Red Devils, it always invokes memories of uh, Shirley Shaw and the fellas who used to jump out of the plane. Brilliant. That's long gone. Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably too young. For, you're probably too young for that reference. I'm not too young, young for that. There's an awful lot of people who are watching who will be too no, young for that, enough. but unfortunately I'm not. Uh, yeah. Right. Before we Brilliant. get into the action, Kevin, uh, there are still the last few remaining tickets for our Red V Forum a week on Monday, the 18th of March. Mike Bennett, along with a couple of first team players and potentially another first team player very, very soon in Noah Stevens. Uh, tickets are £20, include a buffet in conjunction with the Saints Community Development Foundation. There are a few tickets remaining. Please don't leave it very long before you get in touch because we need to know the numbers. And get in touch with us or Dave Howarth on Dave Howarth's normal number, which most people have as a hotline. I think everyone in St. Helens will have him as uh, saved in the fold, Dave Coaches or whatever. Uh, yeah, that's it. Don't don't miss out on, on this because last time we did it, it was a great night and it's expected to be exactly the same again. Yeah, Mike, Mike Bennett's great host. Um, we'll have some good crack and some salt and pepper chicken. Oh, yes. Kevin, uh, we were there yesterday for the news that Saints women are to be paid in 2024. Uh, on the photo there, Jodie Cunningham, Tara Jones, Emily Rudge uh, signing their deals. The one thing that I took from yesterday mainly was Eamon McManus's comments. Um, it's all right, the club's pushing things forward, but it's time that the RFL and Super League took responsibility. It shouldn't be getting led by the clubs, or it shouldn't have to be. And there should be strategic leadership in helping develop the women's game, and it shouldn't just fall on the trailblazers, Saints, Leeds, York. Yeah, um, that's it. You spoke very well about that. And, and are we expecting a little bit too much from the RFL there? I don't know, but but you'd think that because this is kind of so new and it is only a couple of years older than its current um, incarnation, um, because it's so new that they would be able to to get hold of it um, and to be able to to kind of mould it how they want to go with it. As I say, are we expecting a bit too much and clubs are just being left to do it on their own and unfortunately some clubs may end up running while others are trying to play catch up, it's not what we want to see. We want to see uh, a competition where results are in jeopardy, where players like you, you could turn up to a game and you know that it's not going to finish a blowout or score to nothing. Um, yeah, and that's it. Hopefully, the RFL can come in and, and give clubs guidance and, and set up a framework or something like that just to, to kind of keep pushing the game as well, to help it grow, to help it flourish. And I think the other thing we took from yesterday, from um, listening to the to the women being interviewed, from Maiman, from Mike Rush, it's it can't simply be about just chucking money as the first thing. As much as I'm sure all of the women involved in the sport would like that, the infrastructure needs to be put in place. And, and that's what Saints have done. They're providing the women playing the sport with the best medical facilities, the treatment for the injuries, the fitness, the 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 meal preps. I think it, it was a Nutra prep that was mentioned as the meal prep. Um, yeah. The facilities to train, the deal that they've got with the uh, village hotels for the gym memberships. You've got to have everything in place. If you, if you want to make the game professional and treat it professionally in terms of finance, everything in the background needs to be in place as well. And I think that's what Saints have done. Um, and this was the f the final piece in the jigsaw on that. Yeah, I think, um, and obviously an advert for the, the interviews we did yesterday, which is available on YouTube. Um, it's worth listening to what Mike Rush has to say about all this. Because we asked him if uh, 
all that being in place was the reason that now was the right time. And I know fans have got a natural and emotional reaction and the fans will say, oh, it's about time. But it's about more than just pay this. Uh, it's about treating the women's team with the respect they deserve to and putting in a professional infrastructure to help them build the game. We've just been talking about it with the RFL and, and what they can do, but it's about the clubs also doing their bit there. I know it doesn't make headlines. Like, setup of a new thing doesn't make headlines as much as match payments for the players, but the cost of setting all that up probably outweighs the current cost of, of match payments because it's massive behind-the-scenes stuff and you've got to have that in place. Um, it's a step in the right direction. It's very, very welcome and it is a great step in the right direction. But we're talking about a first step, really, here. And it's you then wonder what the next step's going to be. You mentioned there about the, the women training at, um, at Village Hotel Gyms. So is the next step a training centre for all the Saints clubs to get under one roof and be able to all fit in there, uh, whether that's men's, women's, academy, age groups, everyone like that? Does that come ahead of everything else? Uh, is it the women's team kind of having um, revenue streams that are exclusively for them? Is it the women having merchandise in the club shop where they might have we might have T-shirts with... Tar on with Jody on with Emily on, even if it was a limited range to start off with. What what is the next step? My guess is it's going to be a mix of all of them. Where they do start bringing a couple more revenue streams in, so they can invest back into it. Because once you take the emotion out of this, you've got to remember that this is a business, and it's a business that in a sport that is it makes money sometimes and it loses money at other times. So it, lo it loses money a lot of the time, and, and as you say, yeah. it's a business. The women's team aren't a charity, it's not a yeah. charitable arm of the club. There's sponsorships available if you want to sponsor the women's kit, there's player sponsorships available. You can, you, it'll come to a point where tickets need to be bought to watch the women's team, and it's a fantastic product. And everyone should be willing to pay the money that is necessary to ensure that things are in place. But as a club, yep. we do everything right. I know we were talking yesterday when players are injured, whether that be the women's team, academy players, under-15s, under-16s players. If they need surgery, they are looked after. A prime example of that was Vicky Whitfield, who has undergone surgery, I think it was yesterday, on a knee injury. Get well soon, Vicky. But she didn't have to do what some clubs do and refer them to the GP, to the NHS, to, to go on a waiting list. The club have looked after Vicky. They've sent her to the the Spire Private Hospital to be to be operated on, like one of the men's first team. There's no difference there. That is massive to ensure yeah. that we we do our best by the women, um, at the club. And as you say, I think Mike Rush mentioned yesterday the training centre when it was built 15, 20 years ago. It was built purely for the for the men's first team. Nobody could have envisaged, including the women who are signing the contracts there, that we would reach this stage. I'm sure the club's ambition is to build a training centre. I think it's been mooted a couple of times, whether that be at Par Baths, where that was yeah. on that site. That will come and the club will come together as one club. Um, and who's to say, Kev? Saints women next season, potentially, might have their own home kit, very separate yeah. to the men's. Um, another revenue stream for the club. Yeah, and as I say, I go back to that uh, about time. It's a very emotional thing for fans to just say. And you know what? They deserve it. They deserve the payments for playing, for putting them in, in putting eyes on the game, for beating trailblazers, as we say. But you mentioned that about the the injury to Vicky Whitfield. Uh, we spoke to Leah Burke, who's been, who had a season-ending ACL. That is massive. It is much bigger. It just doesn't make the headlines. But it is massive to treat the players as similarly as you can, whether they are an under-14s player or whether they are a Jodie Cunningham or an Alex Walmsley. That is exactly what we need to do across the board. 
It's it's come on that far, Kev. I was looking back last night at some very 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 old Red V T V episodes, and I think it was the first time the Saints women played Wigan, and I think it was at Robin Park Arena, and yeah. The game was that far behind then. They even let you interview Emily on the pitch at the end of the game. <laughs> yeah, yes. Who, who could have thought within five years they'd go from being interviewed by Kev at Robin Park to lifting the Challenge Cup at Wembley? Exactly. I like to obviously uh, me doing that. Just just put them on the the road to to uh, to Wembley five years later. Yeah, but. We're not Johnny come lately to this, Kev. We've supported the women's team from day one. Fantastic initiative and glad to see that they are starting to reap the rewards that their efforts and their talent deserves. Yes, correct. Right. Moving on. Men's squad news for Salford on Friday night. Tell us the change, change Kev. I was going to say the change, change. Um, Connie, uh, he's obviously been banned for the head contact uh, in the tackle with uh, Lutelli, was it, on Friday night? Um, no, I mean, and see, Richard's back. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think we can under the current framework. I think it, it is what it is. You take your medicine on them and you, you just try and, if you can, do better if that ever comes up again. And T. Ritson has come back into the squad. Right then, uh, I haven't bothered doing the squads or what we would go for this week. I think we can both safely say, Kevin, that assuming everybody is fit and ready to go, Wonga Blake comes in for Conrad. Yes, that uh, I can't see anything else changing. The only other one we very, very briefly discussed off air was if Kersa Siren has a knock, who comes in? Do you bring... Uh, Sioni into the back row and put Noah Stevens on the bench as a prop, or do you bring Sam Royal in as a straight replacement? Yeah, and I can see the arguments for both. To be fair, um, we've we've had a good discussion, which we probably should have saved for this. Um, whereas where I said you're trying to play Sioni through the middle this year, we're a bit light on on props. Do you just leave him there and bring Sam Royal in? Then. You obviously said Sioni is a second rower. You could just bring Noah Stevens in and there's another prop. Done and done. But you can see the arguments for both, guys. Yeah. Uh, Paul Wellens had some good things to say about uh, both Noah Stevens and Johnny Vaughan this week in uh, the presser with Mike Critch. Yeah, he did. Um, it, he said that he was. Put it on the spot then, Kev, to tell us what he said. Yeah, I know. I have read this as well. In fact, I sent it. I sent it to you, didn't I? Um, yeah, Johnny is eager to to get into the first team to start off with, isn't he? Um, and he's 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 wanting to get into this twenty one man squad. He's very very eager. Your time will come, Johnny. Don't you worry about that. With with all the plaudits that you're getting, you just keep your head down. You keep level, and you'll get in this squad. And I think it'll be very very difficult to displace you once you are in the squad. Um, I just think he's that type of person. He's got that type of personality that will will get him and keep him in there. Yeah, Mike Critch said he was uh, knocking on Paul Wellen's door to be in the 21-man squad last week. Um, if Eagerness got you a jersey, I, I think he'd be displacing Jack Wellsby in this team. Yeah, I think he would. I think he would. Well, he might you know even what? displace him all himself and, and coach him. Listen... You've got to back yourself because no one else will. Um, so yeah. fair play for believing in his talent. As you say, the time might be a little bit too soon. I think he might need to earn his spares a little bit. Um, the reserves play while I'm talking. Saturday night at Fatto Heath Rugby Club, free entry, 6pm. Um, it might be a chance for a couple of the players on the outside, on the fringe, uh, to get some game time. So I may well head down myself. Yeah, well, well, I've said that there's a couple of lads who've missed out who've been knocking on his door saying, Am I playing? And I think it obviously depends on who gets picked in the, the 17th and possibly 18th man if they need to be used uh, on Friday. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me to see possibly the last four names in that list um, being used uh, in the reserves game. It might even be that depending on how we go now, we pull up on the Saturday. 
one or two of them forwards may also just be uh, taken out to the firing line in case we need them next week. Yeah. Okay, Salford squad, Kev? Yes. Ethan Ryan comes in, uh, much lauded on the uh, Red Devils uh, Twitter or X uh, feed. They've been chatting about him for the past couple of days. And I have written his name down because I always forget it. David Noff. Not for a lot. I don't know. One of the 14 players who got linked to Saints uh, in the off-season by the bookshop method. Mention as many names as you can and hopefully one will stick. They were poor in people. They were poor in... Oh, I'm not, I'm, I can't be bothered trying to work out who you're on about. <laughs> they were poor <laughs> against us in pre-season. They've had a... Decentish start to the season, given where we thought they were going to be at. I'm not quite sure they have the edge over the lead team we played last week. Um, so I can't see anything more than another Saints home win. No, no, I can't say it. I'm I'm really sorry, David. Not you. I just can't pronounce his name. Um, and that's on me. Yeah, we saw for, we've tipped him not to really bother the top six. Um, and we, we've quantified that, as you mentioned, with uh, what we saw in pre-season and the fact the squad doesn't seem to have an awful lot of depth uh, if they start getting a couple of injuries. While it's early days, I'm happy for him to prove me wrong, uh, except against us. Um, and I, I didn't have him down for turning Hulk KR over last week. Um, but if we keep everyone on the field... And we keep again another great uh, completion rate on on Friday against Lee. If we keep that completion rate high, then it's going to be difficult for them to uh, to get their first win over us since nineteen eighty. Is it? Yes. I'll, I'll My first put... league win, possibly. Not sure where you've put that from, but yes. Uh, breaking news while we're discussing Saints and. The squad, John Benison has just been announced by the club as try of the month. Oh, very there good. Go. Huddersfield won. And, yeah. and you know what? Again, let's let's just go back to that just quickly. John Benison and the team Rich and I, Benison is showing why he's got that shirt at the minute, isn't he? Um, I do feel like sometimes we need a, um, you know, one of them charts that you see, which is, is John Benison or T. Rickson playing? Yes. Call for the other one to play. No, call for your player to play because that's what seems to happen on social media. T. Richardson will get his chance this year for all those who are eager to see him. He will get his chance. Yes. Right. Moving on. Food Bank, once again, will be there on Friday evening. Um, thank you very much to all the fans. I'm sure the Food Bank will, or the Food uh, Pantry won't mind me saying it on their behalf to everyone who donated food last week. Game one, 127 kilograms of food was collected. Last week, 202. Can we beat it this week, Kevin? Um, I will have a bag of food on the way to the food bank tomorrow night. Um, let's keep it growing. Um, it's doing fantastic work. If you aren't able to attend and you're watching this video or you haven't got any food to drop off, you can donate five pound by texting fans for food five to seven zero four seven zero. Yeah, they're doing great work, Dave. They, they absolutely are. We always say that we wish we didn't need food banks, but the state the country's in at the moment, the state the world's in at the moment, it, it's a necessity for some people to survive, and, yes. and people will be too proud to to want to go and use them. But you know what? Sometimes you just got to put food on the table. And this is people who are not necessarily, as some might say, oh, it's just scroungers. It's not. It's people who will be in full-time work, who will have found themselves on hard times. It'll be a whole range of people. Um, so I think the, I think the saying is, Kev, no one is more than one paycheck away from relying on a food bank to feed the family. Yeah, and in this town, I bet that is true of quite a big percentage of the town. Yeah. Um, so if you if you can drop something off, even just a tin, nip into Tesco on the way past, grab a, a, a tin of beans or 
bit of UHT milk or, or something that isn't going to immediately perish or need a fridge, noodles, stuff like that. If you can get them, drop them in. The guys at the food bank, food pantry will be more than grateful and we can uh, we can keep those um, those donations coming in. Yes, and we all know who the current governments are who are responsible. Da, 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 da. Moving on to World Book Day. Da, 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 da. It's World Book Day. Da, da, da. That's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what I was singing. <laughs> um, there it is, Matty Lees and Lewis Dodd with their favourite Roald Dahl books as they attended Ashurst Primary. Um, the players have been going around all the... Um, is Matty Lees dressed up as Jake Wingfield on that one? Yes, Jake Wingfield, that's sorry. A, that's a great outfit, that then. Um, ah, yeah. ah. <laughs> Matty's done really well. <laughs> you upgraded to the better looking Jake Wingfield. I, I tell you what, that's that should be in the club shop, the Jake Wingfield World Book Day outfit. Get that yes. in the club shop before we'll kick off. I was just testing you, Kevin. I wasn't looking closely <laughs> enough. Yes, <laughs> uh, their favourite uh, Roll Dial books, I think, is that George and the Giant Peach? I'm not sure what. Uh, Jake is holding, um, but um, the club once again supporting the community in the town. I think all the players have had a bit of a rota. They've got round all the primary schools in St Helens to promote uh, good reading habits ar- alongside our youngsters in the town. Another great initiative from the club. Yeah, again, we we always talk about when Justin Holbrook came over and, and he reconnected the club with the St Helens community. We've con- continued that and we just keep on going and going with it and it's something like that which you know what that's how you get your fans of the future we have these players in can we go and watch them players can we go to saints can i buy a shirt i like the hoodie there is wearing can i have that hoodie this is where the the club doing the community bits is fantastic, absolutely wonderful. And just before we move on from anything like this, I just want to mention Moses and Bai. Um, Saints did a little interview with him after the game, after the league game, and it was great to see him with a smile on his face, but he was on about his song, um, and he's got his young kids coming home singing it to him. Um, and it said, it, but it did sound like the school had reminded him that there might be a few choice words in the original um, yeah from the ground up that's how you develop it yeah. right Kev before we finish favourite book and who would you have dressed up as for World Book Day uh, my favourite book is Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne um, so Phileas Fogg the main protagonist in it okay I my favourite book To Kill a Mockingbird Um. That's my second. It's a great book. I'd, I'd have liked to have called my child Atticus because he's a perfect gentleman, but didn't go for that in the end. Although um, there is a certain Saints player who did name their child Atticus. Great Correct. choice. Um, yes. Yeah, great book. Good values um, that you can learn from that. Uh, I would have gone as Willy Wonka. Just for the outfit. Um, yeah, fair enough. My kids went to school today, Kev. One went as a Teletubby. No <laughs> idea why. Which one? <laughs> the 11-year-old. No, I meant which Teletubby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, the green one. I have no idea. Dipsy. Dipsy's Tinkling's purple. purple. Dipsy's green. La La's yellow and pose red. There you go. I know oh. my childhood TV yep. programmes. Even though I was about 15 when it was first on. <laughs> the rest. <laughs> And my, my six-year-old went dressed as an Everton player. Yeah, Jared Branthwaite or... I don't know, but when I asked him what his favourite book was, because he had to take the book in, he took his Everton annual. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, if he enjoys reading it, as long as kids are reading, it doesn't matter. It doesn't Correct. not matter. If he's got a book in hands, if it's full of pictures and just a couple of words, fine. Let him read it, let him enjoy it. Yes. Right. That's like a, a, a I can use it ten and finally, isn't it? Yeah, the Fowaluma, David the Fowaluma. Oh, brilliant! It, right, it, that that is the perfect place to finish. Now, Kev has managed to nail down a Salford player's <laughs> name. Don't forget to like, share, 
and subscribe. Kevin isn't going to be with us tomorrow night because he's off frolicking. Yeah. With friends. But guess what? It's me and Peter. Yeah. Catch you soon. Definitely catch you soon. <laughs>